Do you ever get frustrated because it seems like all the wrong people get ahead in life? I mean, you know, it, it, it used to be when I was back in high school, was trying to live for God. I was struggling kind of being two different people at, at church and at school. But the, the people who were just absolutely no interest in God, they seemed to be the most popular kids in our school. And I was kind of that second tier of popularity. I, I've heard uh, different people, especially girls, say, how, how come the girls without standards are the first ones to get asked out all the time? That's frustrating. I figured that would go away when we got older, but, but no. It often seems like the wrong people get promotions at work. The, the companies that don't seem to have any social consciousness, let alone necessarily be operated by biblical principles, Sometimes those are the companies everybody's talking about and everybody wants to own their stock. We could give a hundred more examples of this. The truth is this is universal. It's timeless. There's absolutely nothing new about it. That's the frustration that was on the writer of Psalm 73's heart. As we continue reading through the book of Psalms, I mean, sometimes these can all start to sound a little bit familiar. They're all about worship. But then we run into one like Psalm 73. Asaph is the writer here and he says, Truly God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. Great start. Absolutely true what he says. But then he starts to get very real. Verse 2, But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled. My steps had nearly slipped. For I was envious of the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. And then he goes on and, and, and he says, you know, they really, really do have it made. They don't have to struggle. They don't have to make difficult decisions about do I do what is what I want to do, the selfish path, or what God wants me to do. They're not divided. They just, they just do what they want to do. And it seems to work out pretty well for them. Uh, you know, it, it continues on, verse 10. He says, therefore his people, that's God's people, turn back to them and find no fault in them. And they say, how can God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the wicked, always at ease. They increase in riches. All in vain have I kept my heart clean and washed my hands in innocence. For all the day long I have been stricken and rebuked every morning. Ever feel that way? What's the point? Why do I struggle? Why do I try so hard to be right? If, if you look at it, it doesn't seem there's any kind of justice in this world at all. Maybe I'd be better off just setting aside this book and doing what I want to do. Well, the conversation with Asaph, it's really in his own mind, this conversation, but I think it's ultimately with his spirit and God's spirit. Verse 16, he says, But when I thought how to understand this, it seemed to me a wearisome task until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I discerned their end. And what comes in the rest of this psalm is, and really it comes to a conclusion in the last two verses, he says, For behold, those who are far from you shall perish. You put an end to everyone who is unfaithful to you. But for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the Lord God my refuge that I may tell of all your works. Asaph says, you know what? I came really close. In fact, I came really close to leading others astray because this is so confusing and it's so difficult. But when I thought how to understand this, it seemed to me a wearisome task until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then I discerned their end. Think of the sanctuary of God not simply as a place, Yes, there are churches like there was a temple. Yes, there are churches like there was a tabernacle. But sanctuary with God can be that place where you go just to get alone with Him, where you open the scriptures, where you say, God, I'm so influenced by what I watch on TV, what I see on the news, I've lost my perspective again. Please, Lord, help me see it clearly again. And what God did for him, I believe he'll do for me I believe he'll do it for you, that he lifts us out of our just temporal mindset. He says, what you see now 
isn't reality. It's really short term. Even your whole life, Phil, is short term. What matters is eternity and it's worth it. It's worth it to follow God. It's worth it to try to encourage others to do the same. So don't be thrown off by sometimes when it seems like there's not justice in this world because there's not. This isn't heaven yet. We're not in eternity and someday God's going to set it all right. But right now the struggle is part of the process he uses to motivate us to trust him more. Be encouraged by Psalm 73. And if you need more boost than that, flip those numbers and go to Psalm 37. And there's really some very parallel thoughts there. I hope you're encouraged by this, and we'll see you next time on Walkthrough Voices.